us next week, we will keep having this conversation. The conversation is that we must listen to one another. You know, again, I've learned honestly a lot from the elder statesman, like Daniel said, uh, Tanku Yakasai, and the same thing with uh, Adamu Gaba. Adamu, um, honestly, thank you. I was reading up about you and uh, I was so impressed to see that even you, uh, you were in, you know, the, the, the time and majority that we used between the age of four and eight, that you, you know, your, your dad forced you to become an imagery and your mom didn't. Even that contest and that contrast, you know, within a family, a mom saying no and a dad saying no, you have to do it. Then bridging that gap, coming to a middle point where your mom and your dad agreed, okay, you have to go within that four years, afterwards you go to a normal conventional school. And, you know, bearing in mind with that uh, background, my question, you know, as the final question and the concluding thought will be, what do you think, because you have that background, what do you think is the break or the, you know, the missing link? Why the Amajiri system appears not to work? And as we all see today, I mean, it's not, all of us have social media. We see this thing that you hear, Amajiri is being deported from Kaduna, Amajiri is being deported back from Nasarawa State. Suddenly we hear in Lagos, Dangote truck ferrying people down to Lagos in the south, Aquibon, Lagos, uh, Aquibon, Anambra, Enugu, even River State, and people being found in, in trucks. Now, in, as part of your concluding thought, what do you think is happening and how can the federal government quickly nip this in the board before it escalates? Yeah, the problem of Almajiri, the Almajiri system is actually like a traditional system of, 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 of local education or Islamic education. I don't even want to get all to call together, call it Islamic education. It's like a local system of learning. The, even before the advent of Islam. So when Islam came, it was now adapted as part of the system of the way people can learn. Not just Quran, but they learn science, they learn art, they learn mathematics, they learn astrology, and so many things within the Almajiri system. So, um, but because it was institutionalized as the Northern education system then, where almost most of these elder statements, including uh, um, our last elder statement who spoke, you had that he said he's not educated in a formal way, but you can see very clear eloquence in the way he talked, simply because he had that kind of education. So when the colonial masters came, they tried to push for the education system that they came with, which is the modern education system we have, but it was vehemently rejected by the Northern Emirates because they believe their system is far better than that old system. So of course, you know the way colonial masters did during that period, killed most of the Emirates that disagree with them, some of them dethroned them and then brought more compliant emirs and then asked them to adapt a new system. And part of the agreement or the structure is that the Almajiri must not be funded by the state coffers anymore, that the Almajiri must fend for themselves. But they, since the British government is controlling that area under that regard, they will not have any budget for Almajiri but the new education system. So that's exactly how the process started. So then the community was responsible for feeding and supporting the Almajiri. And no Almajiri is expected to travel from his own locality to another state to go and learn until he has graduated and become so matured and the knowledge he needs is not immediately available within that environment. That's when he has to travel. But usually it's within a local environment like I did my own, very close to my parents' house I go and then come back. That's the normal way of Almajiri. Eventually, when we now began to have a lot of state control and centralization, the same centralization that we are covering, that we need the restructuring, everything now comes back to the center. And the center's resources now become under pressure. There is demand from the public to deliver public goods in terms of education and healthcare, but the center could not be able to do that. The center have limited budget. These Almajiri children were, according to them, learning, and they don't have budget no more, and they have to survive. 
and the parents in those localities have no those primary schools that their children will attend. So the only viable way for these children to get education is to move to places where you have al majri institutions. It's cheaper and they don't have to worry about boarding. They only need to send the child. To the ordinary parents in the village, what they think deep inside their heart is that they are doing God's work. So, and you know what, when ideology and godliness is associated with something, it became like a puritanical drive, that I'm doing something, I'm surrendering my child to the will of God. So it became deeply, deeply ideological. So, subsexive leaders in the North, supposed to do something, find a way and reform this system by bringing modern education and al system in one. But unfortunately, because of the resource pressure, they decided to concentrate only on the limited resource they have to power only those children that have accepted that model and condemn the al children to obscurity. And I and you know that these are also Nigerian children. The fact that their parents made a mistake of sending them out does not mean that we should throw them out like a rubbish, like, like a pack of rubbish. And that's what happened. So suddenly, when we have this COVID-19, an opportunity was presented for them to go back to their state. Some governors were even suggesting that uh, we should ban the system altogether. Now, the person that is inside al Majri will naturally see any governor or any leader who is saying that you should ban him as an enemy. Because to him, you either did not educate him properly on the need for him to change, or you do not provide an alternative system for whom, for which he can use to practice. You can pack 7.5 million children and say they should go home. Which school are they going to attend to? Which family are they going to go back to when they have been living in the city all the, or some places all their lives, knowing different kind of children? It's a complete problem that is going to give, that is going to come back later if you decided to throw it that way. And that is why my campaign on this al Chi issue, if you notice I have been very active online, I even call myself the grandson of al Majri, is because we have to reform the system. That the same education budget that goes to all other institutional settings should also go to this kind of al Majri, established, authenticated, trusted al Majri system. And another thing again is that most of the teachers, those al Majris, they trust their teachers more than even their parents. But you cannot see anywhere you have a dialogue between the al Majri malams and the state leaders about how to reform the system. You can only hear a leader who is sitting in one location issuing order to people that do not even believe in him. And that is where you have problem. So there's a disconnect between the leaders and the actual practitioners of the al Majri system. And the only way the al Majris will want to listen to the leaders is when the leaders understand them and come to their level and talk to them and make them see the need of why change is actually needed. When you do that, you can begin to have their buy-in into modernization. It's not something that can happen just like rocket science. It's something that you have to take deliberate effort to try to bring them on board. They must see reason why they should do that. Somebody will tell you that because I go to modern school, I have many cars, I have houses, I have job to do, I have this, I have that, the Almagiri man is begging on the street, he has nothing, and he is angry. To him, lack of wealth is, is actually a better wealth for him. The way he lives, he lives his life like somebody who is just going to heaven straight. In fact, wealth is a problem. So if you see you with the wealth, you will just be assuming that you are just, you are just fashioned to go and suffer in the heaven in, in, uh, when you die. While he is going to the heaven because he has less. So there's an ideological disconnect between the leaders. So until we now make deliberate effort to reform al Majris and try to mainstream their malams, mainstream the practice, and then try to drag them into modernity, into the modern system, you cannot get it right at all. And that's why I'm happy you brought the, the correlation in my own family between my mom and my dad. My mom is an ardent push, uh, pusher for reform. She needs new things. So then she has seen so many children going to conventional school. She liked the way they dress. She liked it when they have their bath, you know, and then go to school and come back. She liked it when they hold pen and paper to write. But my dad wants me to hold a wooden, uh, we call it a law, and then be writing on it. So she says she wants her child to be a modern person. So that's why there is this disconnect. He said he has to go to al Majiri school, learn Quran very well, then I can allow him to go to modern school. And that concession was struck, and then it made me now today.
So, so we have to find a way to accept both the two opinions before we carry on. The same way, my dad was able to agree with my mom, and my mom was able to agree with my dad, and then eventually they create a hybrid almagiri and a modern person in me. So that is what is supposed to be done, you know. So that, that's that's actually my 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 comment on this. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, one small, I mean, it's you know we can stay all evening here listening to this narrative. It is, um, I think, is a very fine place to leave it now. And I'll once more thank every one of you that have joined us today. Next week is another date, the same time, 7 o'clock Nigerian time. That is uh, 19 o'clock plus 1 GMT. We, next week, as I said before, we will be having Chief Nyamwogo and Pa Ayo Adebanjo. Once more, thank you and God bless. Bye, everyone.